They say the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again, but expecting different results. Hi, I'm Leone, and welcome back to my Japan vlog series. Please stay tuned to find out if I truly am utterly insane. I'm determined to get this. Miss my previous two vlogs? What are you doing? That's okay. You can always go back and watch me get Asian flush on an izakaya food tour in Tokyo, become inundated with canines, drag a heavy suitcase up the hills of Hakone, and take a luxurious dip in a private onsen. But now, it's time to pick up the pace a little as we head to another popular city that was once the capital of Japan. Come along for the ride and find out if I become the ultimate Pokemon master as we explore Kyoto. Our journey towards Kyoto begins at Odawara Station as we'll be riding the famous Japanese bullet train, the Shinkansen, finally putting to use our 7-day JR pass that we pre-purchased before our trip. The pass cost us at the time 330 Australian dollars per person, which is actually quite expensive and I remember being absolutely shocked at the price. This was last year and from what I gather since then, the price has actually increased even more by 70%. Insane. Despite the price, I was really excited to finally be riding the famous Shinkansen bullet train. It's now time to settle in for this two hour train ride to Kyoto. I have one more thing to add about the JR Pass. For something that costs a ridiculous amount of money, the tickets themselves are paper and they don't replace it for you if you lose it. So if you are buying a JR Pass, Guard it with your life. After our scenic and speedy ride on the Shinkansen, we've made it to Kyoto Station. Now it's time to take the subway to the closest stop to our Airbnb. I'm sleep deprived and I'm hungry. I need all my basic needs fulfilled right now. Somebody get this girl some food. After navigating the subways of Kyoto, we finally made it to our Airbnb. We paid around 925 Australian dollars for a four night stay. And something that we didn't capture here on camera is that it's up three flights of very narrow stairs. So getting up and down with luggage was no easy feat. However, it was nice to experience the traditional tatami flooring. Our Airbnb also came with an outdoor bath, which unfortunately I didn't get the chance to use because it was that time of the month. But the views outside were pretty breathtaking during sunset. Okay, by now I am a starving mess. Luckily, there was a konbini, aka convenience store, close to our Airbnb, so we purchased some quick snacks. Konbini sushi, spam sushi, pork tongue stick, cute little mochi balls. The spam onigiri pretty much tasted as you would expect. If you're a fan of spam like I am, it doesn't disappoint. Mmm. Next, it's time to try convenience store sushi. Overall, it was pretty good, definitely better than the packaged sushi you would get at a supermarket here in Australia. I was really excited to try this, the pork tongue stick cheese. When I first saw it, I thought it would be similar to a twiggy stick that you'd get here in Australia. I was very wrong. It didn't taste like a twiggy stick at all. It was the most disgusting thing I put in my mouth and normally I'm pretty good with finishing snacks, but this time it was a no for me. Luckily, I had something sweet left to consume. It's cute. These are just some little mochi balls with red bean paste in them. Safe and delicious. It's chewy. It's yummy. I like it. Mmm.
Mm. Okay, the Kambini mukbang is over, but the eating doesn't end here. We headed out to explore Kyoto City and came across the famous Tanyan cheese coin snack. Of course I had to try it. While the first bite was lacking in cheese, the consecutive bites left me in a cheesy battle. <laughs> it was cheesy, delicious goodness, as you would expect. I mean, just look at that. I'm lactose intolerant, but for cheese, I sacrifice my bowels. After the cheesy indulgence, we found ourselves in a place with lots of gachapon machines, which are little capsule toys that you can get from these dispensers. There were also some risque figurines for sale. I found a machine that had Pokemon themed toys, and I thought I'd get one to bring back to my nephew back in Australia. But for some reason, it was so confusing trying to figure out how to actually work these machines. After many attempts, I had to get Aaron to stop recording and help. <laughs> Finally, success. Figured it out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. After the gachapon machines, it was time to drop some serious cash at the local Gigo, aka the arcade. My first attempt at this little claw machine was a failure, but that's okay. I had my sights set on something a little bit bigger. You probably know by now from my intro that I spent a ridiculous amount of tries trying to get this Meryl. One game cost 100 yen, and I had some spare coins left over which I was willing to spend to try and win. Eventually, I exhausted all those coins, and the smart thing to do here was probably to call it a night. But no, I became a woman on a mission, exchanging my money for 100 yen coins. I'm determined to get this. I was so sure that the combination of my position technique and the machine algorithm would eventually get me the win. Same here lady, same here. Unfortunately, despite many close attempts, the odds just weren't in my favour. This is my last one. I think I just spent like 15 bucks trying to get that one. And back to the coin changer we go. Aaron was kind enough to lend me some money he had left, and I think at this point we thought it would be a shame to walk away with nothing. I'm not an addict. I don't have a gambling problem. <laughs> I even went to try a different machine that looked a little more promising. but sadly I had no luck there either. So we went back to our original machine. All right, let me go find an ATM to pay Aaron back. It was time to call it a night and admit defeat. Despite the expensive and disappointing end to the night before, we were excited to start a brand new day in Kyoto.
we began with an early lunch at Tonkatsu KYK to fill us up for a big day of exploration. So far, the food in Japan is really great. This included. We then took a subway to the area of Arashiyama, and our first stop here was this dessert place that caught my eye. It's like a more thick texture. Very good. Mm. 10 out of 10. With early lunch and dessert in our bellies, we set out to explore the breathtaking Katsura River. We really wanted to hire a boat on the river, but unfortunately due to time constraints, we decided not to, as our main goal for the day was to visit the monkey park. I definitely recommend starting your day early here if you want to soak up some rays on the water and hire a boat. After admiring the scenic view, we made our way to the Arashiyama Monkey Park. To get there, it's a short hike up a small mountain. It's a very steep walk and I have blisters on my feet. So this is very fun. Really? It was such a hot day. My little fan was working overtime. Luckily, there was an electrical fan laid out so I could air out my armpits. With my armpits aired, it was time to press on. Where are these monkeys? It wasn't too long before we spotted our first one. There was definitely no shortage of monkeys once we reached the top, and the view from here was spectacular. Spot the difference. Me, monkey. monkeys were so cute and I wanted to interact with them a little more so we went inside this human cage where you can buy food to feed the monkeys you could choose between two options of feed either peanuts or apples I ended up choosing the peanuts 
I gave it to his little hands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but I was definitely biased towards feeding the baby monkeys. They were just so adorable. We spent so much time up here just watching and filming the monkeys, and to be honest, I probably could have spent the entire day here. But after playing and feeding with the monkeys, it was time to feed myself. We made our way back down the mountain, across the river, and into town, where we came across creme brulee donuts. Yep, you heard that right. Two fantastic desserts combined into one. Creme brulee donuts. Delicious. Oh, ready? Okay, I sincerely apologize for my shitty food reviews. I definitely need to work on describing the taste and the texture for future trips. Don't judge me. Food to me is either yum or yuck. And this creme brulee donut was definitely yum. Next on our snack adventure were these cucumbers on a stick. I am a huge pickle fan, so this was just calling out to me. Cucumber on a stick. It tastes like a salty cucumber. Okay, this salty cucumber did not live up to the hype. Next snack please. I was about to take a bite into this soy covered rice cake but got ushered away by a patrol officer because this was a no eating zone. But fear not, the designated eating area wasn't too far away. It's literally just rice, rice bowl with soy sauce. It tastes good though. It's like sweet soy sauce. After our snack break, we made our way to the final tourist destination of the day, the famous Arashiyama Bamboo Forest. Now, this place is one of those Instagram famous tourist destinations, and you'll often find lots of people posting gorgeous photos from here, but to be honest, it was kind of underwhelming in person. Personally, I think this is something you could probably leave off your itinerary if you're short on time. But regardless, I've ticked it off the list, and with that concludes day two in Kyoto. Good morning, and welcome to the day I grew two extra toes on my feet in the form of gigantic blisters. Today is the day we put our poor little feet to the test and hike up Japan's most iconic shrine, the Fushimi Inari Taisha. We got to the shrine around 8am to beat the crowds, and I highly recommend doing this because it gets really, really busy here. If you want the best chance of capturing that Instagram worthy photo, trust me, it's best to go early in the morning. It does get less crowded the higher you go up though, but a word of warning, there are a lot of stairs. 12,000 steps to be precise. My feet were already so sore from prior days of walking, but we were determined to reach the top. Despite the tedious hike up to the summit, there are lots of places to stop and rest, and little things to explore at the shrines. We even came across an opening that had a beautiful view. But there were still many steps that we had to take before reaching the top. Finally, we reached the summit of Mount Inari at 233 meters. There's no big sign that says you've reached the summit. Instead, there's a shrine where you can give your offering and receive your fortune. <laughs> I can't read Japanese, so this was really hard to match the characters on the stick with what was on the board. 
but after a couple of minutes, I managed. And then I used my Google Lens app to translate. Inari mountain god Shemeyu Fu In, the prosperous end is unknown. The Masado is a sign of hopeful joy. Now, if you have a heart that works for the sake of the world, you should know that you'll be very happy. I am happy. Apparently, it's lucky. So, that's two good fortunes this trip. We're at the summit of Mount Inari. After the summit, there's only one way we can go, and that's back down. And so begins our descent. On the way down, we saw an elderly man carrying heavy supplies up the stairs, and I was absolutely shocked. I can't even imagine going up these stairs every day carrying supplies at such an age. When we got closer to the bottom, we saw a tree that had paper fortunes tied to the branches. I think these ones are usually unlucky fortunes that people get. So far on the trip, I had only gotten lucky ones, so I wanted to see if that streak would continue in the form of a golden cat. There's my fortune. You see that? That says excellent luck. That's the third good fortune of the trip. <laughs> Great fortune full of energetic sparks. Just don't get carried away or you might stumble on something. It's not possible to advance in anything with only high spirits. Make sure you have a plan before proceeding. Hope. Don't aim too high, be steady with your goals. Love. Sparks in the air. Try not to spoil the mood. Marriage. Great timing for women. Don't forget to praise your partner. <laughs> work. Busy time at work, but try not to overwork yourself. Money. Good, but try not to spend too much. And health. You're in good shape. Be careful not to get hurt. Am I in good shape? I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> Every single part of my body is sore. I have blisters on my toes. But anyways, good fortune. Walking, it was time to head back into town and find some food. We went to Gion, which is Kyoto's famous geisha district, and found a cute little bar called Rutobo. I got sold on it because there was a cute Shiba Inu at the front, and the best way to attract me is with dogs, obviously. But I'm glad we went here because I had probably one of the most memorable meals here in Japan, with this delicious smoked wagyu romp. We also ordered some other assortments of dishes, but I definitely recommend getting the Wagyu if you ever come here. The bar itself is really nice and eclectic, and the ambience was super cozy. And finally, one of the highlights of my trip in Kyoto was finding a store that sold BT21 merchandise. I'm surrounded by all the BT21 things. I want this. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a big BTS fan, so I was literally like a kid in the candy store. I can put my new apartment keys on them. So I was going to only buy a chimmy mug, but surprisingly, Aaron encouraged me to get all seven of the characters, which proved to be difficult when I was packing my luggage. I ended up buying so much stuff that the lady had to come around the counter to give me my bag. How am I going to get this back on? How do you feel? I'm so happy. I think this is the best night of Japan so far. <laughs> and that brings our time in Kyoto to an end. There's definitely no shortage of touristy things to do in this city, considered the cultural capital and one of Japan's most touristic destinations. I'll always remember it as the place where my feet fell apart due to all the walking that we did. Kyoto, more like Kyoto's. 
please appreciate my lame joke. Anyway, we stayed in Kyoto for one more night as a base for our day trip to Nara, which you'll see in the next vlog. Okay, okay, you are naughty. Ow! And yep, I get bitten by one of the locals. So get excited for that. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.